So in today's topic, we will be discussing regarding the concept of portal system. So in the portal system, we will be discussing regarding the anatomy of the portal system, that is the portal veins and from which parts of the stomach or which parts of the spleen and which parts of the intestine the portal vein is collecting the blood and next we will discuss the physiology physiology in the sense the actual uh, meaning of this portal system and the actual function of this portal system and next the clinicals clinicals are regarding the portal hypertension and also the liver cirrhosis which occurs in acute alcoholics so before we go into detail anatomy, we will discuss the ligaments that are connected between the portal system as well as the stomach, sorry the duodenum. So as you see here, this is the liver, this is the duodenum. So there is a connection through a ligament between the stomach sorry between the liver as well as the duodenum so this connection is called as hepato duodenal ligament so this is the hepato duodenal ligament that is connecting the duodenum as well as the liver hepato duodenal ligament is very important because it contains generally three components one component is that hepatic artery and the other component is that hepatic vein or the portal vein which we will be discussing right now and the last component is called as the cystic duct. So, this is one component called as hepatic artery, and the second component called as hepatic vein or the portal vein, and then lastly, it is called as cystic duct. So, these are the three structures. So, now we will be discussing about this middle structure that is the hepatic vein or the portal vein. And the ligament just I named as hepatoduodenal ligament. Okay. So this is the liver. Liver collects the blood from the superior mesenteric vein and inferior mesenteric vein. So they are the parts of this hepatic portal system. This is superior mesenteric as well as inferior mesenteric. Okay. So this is the superior mesenteric vein, inferior mesenteric vein. So both of the superior and inferior mesenteric is finally drain into the portal vein. So if we go into detail, superior mesenteric vein collects the blood from the colon region as well as the inferior mesenteric also collects the blood from the colon region. So exactly speaking, superior mesenteric vein collects the blood from the right colic region as well as the middle colic region so as you see here this is a colon this is the ascending colon this is the transverse colon and finally this is the descending colon okay ascending transverse and descending colon from this ascending colon this is the ascending colon from this ascending colon and this region is called as the middle colon region okay this is the middle colon region this is the ascending colon region from this ascending colon region and the middle colon region the blood is collected by the superior mesenteric vein and from the transverse colon as well as the descending colon the blood is collected from the inferior mesenteric vein so finally they collect the blood the venous blood and finally they drain into the portal vein the portal vein as it is proceeding towards the liver it receives one more vein from the spleen region this is called as splenic vein I will label the parts later this is called as the splenic vein and next after receiving the blood from the splenic vein this vein portal vein ascends upwards in the meanwhile it receives one more vein from the stomach that is the gastric vein and the gastric vein receives blood from two branches this is the left gastric vein and this is the right gastric vein finally draining into the gastric vein and gastric vein in, the, uh, in turn drains into this portal vein and finally as the portal vein is proceeding upwards it receives one more vein 
from the pyloric part of the stomach. As you know, stomach contains three parts. One is called as the fundic part, one is called as the uh, cardiac part, and the last part is called as the pyloric part. So, from that pyloric part of the stomach, the blood is received by this pyloric vein, finally draining into the portal vein. And this portal vein enters into the liver in this way and finally divides into number of branches, the number of branches, very very minute branches. We also call it as dichotomous type of branching. Number of finely repeated branches. Okay? And finally drains into the liver through number of finely repeated branches. So, there is one more vein which, which I need to discuss. This is the liver which I am showing from the anterior surface. So, if I show the liver from the posterior surface, So it looks somewhat like this and so this is the liver from the posterior surface so when we see the liver from the posterior surface here we find two lobes of the liver the right lobe as well as the left lobe so separating the right and the left lobe there is a ligament the end of the ligament is in the form of a flip or a clap this flip or flap is called as the round ligament of the liver and it is also anatomically called as the falciform ligament. So this falciform ligament finally it takes the blood from the umbilicus. So as you see in the abdominal region we find our umbilicus here. Surrounding the umbilicus there are many veins. So for suppose this is the umbilicus. Surrounding this umbilicus there are many veins like this small number of veins small veins which are more in number so from all these veins in the umbilical region the blood is collected through a vein called as paraumbilical vein which finally drains into the liver but before draining into the liver it comes near the falciform ligament it surrounds the falciform ligament in this way and finally drains into the liver so this is the exact structure so this is the anterior surface of the liver as I said from the posterior surface or from the inferior surface it actually comes like this the para umbilical vein ok and this para umbilical vein is receiving the blood from the umbilicus as I said there are minute branches of the umbilicus so these are the minute branches of the umbilicus repeatedly they are branched from here the blood is received by this para umbilical vein this para umbilical vein passes posteriorly and surrounds the falciform ligament or the long, round ligament and finally drains into this liver so this is the complete hepatic portal system the anatomy of the hepatic portal system so once again we will review it These, this is called as the superior mesenteric vein this is called as the inferior mesenteric vein superior mesenteric vein collects the blood from the left colic sorry the right colic region and the middle colic region and inferior mesenteric collects the blood from the left colic region finally drains into the portal vein in the meanwhile there is one more vein that is draining into this portal and this is called as the splenic vein from the spleen and next this is the gastric vein dividing into two that is the left gastric and right gastric taking the blood from the lesser curvature of the stomach and the greater curvature of the stomach and this is called as the pyloric vein and this vein which is coming from the uh, which is draining into the round ligament of the falciform ligament is called as uh, the para umbilical vein and if we see the histology here uh, this portal vein enters into the liver and divides into minute branches and this portal vein after dividing into minute branches it drains into central vein so what is actually central vein so if I take just a section of this liver a single cell of the liver a single cell of the liver looks like this so it is in the form of a hexagonal structure 
So in the center of this hexagonal structure of the hepatocyte, we find a small vein. This vein is called as a central vein. So this portal vein, after entering into the liver, it divides into number of minute branches and finally drains like this into portal vein. So now the anatomy is finished. So I'll be labeling the parts one by one. So this is called as the superior mesenteric vein and this is the inferior mesenteric vein and this is the splenic vein and this is the left gastric vein right gastric vein and this is PV the pyloric vein and this part is called the para umbilical vein para umbilical vein okay and which divides into and finally this main part is called as portal vein and this is the hepatocyte of the liver and this is the umbilicus and these are the veins of the umbilicus so this is the complete anatomy of the portal system so now we will be discussing regarding the physiology of the portal system so actually what is the use of this portal system so as you see here, the portal system is collecting the blood from the intestine region, from the stomach region, from the pyloric region, from the spleen region and nearly from all the parts of the organs uh, which are present in the abdominal region. So exactly what is the function is, exactly what happens is, so when you take any food or when you take any drug, it enters into the stomach through the action of food, due to the action of all the acids the food or the any drug which you take is churned into many small small pieces is chopped into small small pieces and finally it enters into the enteric region that is the intestine small intestine large intestine and in the small intestine and large intestine the food is absorbed that absorbed food is carried with the help of the blood or with the help of this portal vein to the liver so what actually liver does liver contains small cells called as hepatocytes there are millions of hepatocytes the food which enters into the absorbed food which enters into the liver when it enters these hepatocytes if there is any toxic material in that entered food if there is any toxic material this toxic material is converted into intoxic material or we can also say that liver is functioning as a detoxifying organ it detoxifies all the toxic substances after detoxifying the blood is completely purified from there from the liver after purification it goes to the heart from the heart through systemic circulation it is supplied to all the parts of the body so main contrast uh, character of this liver is that it is the primary organ for detoxification any food any food you take first enters to the liver liver checks whether it is a toxic food or normal food if it is toxic then it detoxifies and finally supplies the blood to the liver from there the liver supplies through systemic circulation to all the parts of the body so coming to the clinical relations clinical correlations what happens why uh, why it uh, why there is a liver cirrhosis in the patients of acute alcoholics so in acute alcoholics they will be continuously drinking alcohol so due to this continuous drinking of alcohol as i said any particle you take, any material you take into your stomach, you take through your GIT, first it enters to the liver for checking, primary checking. So, these acute alcoholics, when they will be continuously drinking the alcohol, the alcohol through the blood will be sent to the liver. Liver identifies whether it is a toxic or intoxic material. Of course, alcohol is a toxic, so liver has to detoxify the toxic substances. So in acute alcoholics, liver keeps on detoxifying this alcohol. So at a course of time, the hepatocytes in the liver become inactive. When they become inactive, they stop a process called as detoxification. Then what happens? So in these acute alcoholics, the alcohol content or the toxic substances in the alcohol get accumulated in the liver. When they get accumulated in the liver, due to continuous accumulation, finally a pathology called as liver cirrhosis occurs. So the primary affected organ in acute alcoholics is liver. That is the reason why uh, mainly people of acute alcoholics face liver cirrhosis problems. So what happens? When the liver gets 
cirrhosized or when the liver gets liver cancer so the cancer cells through these veins they pass to different parts of the body and cause cirrhosis in the enteric system in the stomach in the spleen and so and so organs but uh, mainly to discuss the primarily affected organ in acute alcoholics is the liver so this is one clinical correlation the next clinical correlation is portal hypertension even portal hypertension causes liver cirrhosis because due to increased pressure in this portal veins generally this portal veins contains venous blood so what exactly happens is this venous blood the hypertension of this venous blood is increased suddenly so due to this increased hypertension of uh, this venous blood all the cells which are present in the liver the hepatocytes become inactive when they become inactive as i said the toxic substances accumulates there and causes liver cirrhosis so this is the complete anatomy physiology as well as the clinical correlations of the hepatic portal system thank you